So we are conducting the 50th lecture. Uh, today it's going to be delivered by Dr. T. R. Govindarajan. Uh, it's going to be on the not theory and the title is uh, to be or not to be. And he is not going to uh, burden you with too much of mathematical calculations, but he will be talking about the applications of the uh, not theory in various fields. So this is going to be an interesting uh, uh, lecture. Um, the, uh, again, as usual, the ground rule is all, all of you please may, uh, mute your uh, uh, devices uh, until the lecture is over. Uh, you will be provided with the opportunity to ask questions. Um, you can ask questions and the questions will be moderated by me. One by one, you can ask questions. We will also have the um, direct chat with the um, uh, uh, resource person, Dr. TRG. So with that, we will be closing the uh, meeting by 12, uh, event by 12.30. That's our plan. So let me ask Dr. TRG today. Okay. Thank you, Jen, uh, Roman Andri. Uh, Ah, chat a message Okay. Uh, for I'm very happy to speak, but I gave the first talk on PSL, and now this is 50th talk, and I'm happy to be uh, associated with this again. Uh, Mr. Vijayan asked me to. Oh, uh, okay. okay, Mr. Vijayan asked me to speak uh, some mathematics talk, and uh, I felt I should speak, but the only thing is I, since it is general audience, I should not indulge in too much of mathematics. So I'm going to give mathematics of something uh, in some simple language with mainly pictures and uh, usefulness of this kind of mathematics. Now, uh, the reason why I'm not focusing on the too much mathematics is, of course, there is a generic audience. And uh, if there are more interesting questions, Okay. There are interesting questions we will see uh, at the end. Now, uh, what is the topic I'm chosen is something which I have actually done some work and uh, it was done in early 90s and 2000, first decade of 2000 on what is, no, what is known as uh, not here. So the question is what is not? So you will be uh, surprised. Some of these things which we know earlier are uh, very useful, very useful in our uh, uh, daily life everywhere. And my talk will be focusing on from very simple things which we are aware of from where I will be starting mine. Uh, presentation. Okay. So now, so not theory. What is a not? Why is it interesting? This kind of question will be immediately um, coming to our mind. The next is I'm going to speak about history of knots. In fact, knots have a history which is more than 2,000, 3,000 years old, and people have been using knots in our daily life because. People, when they go for shipping or sailors, etc., they have been using knots. Or even people who climb, they use knots. And I'll tell you what are those knots. The next is something which we all know, which is called braid. So braid is same as plate. For you will see that girls, or women, they tie their hair in um, some way where they braid it. Okay, they split it into three parts and then put one on top. Second, etc. There is a deep connection between that braids and the knots, and I will explain how it is coming. That is the next part. And then, after giving this thing, a very minimal introduction to mathematics of braids and knots. Okay, very minimal introduction to braids and knots. 
And then finally, let me go into application of knots to some of the areas. There are several areas in which it can be applied. And uh, one is uh, known as what people use as uh, in physics, uh, where astrophysics uses uh, statistics of uh, fundamental particles, okay, electrons, okay, and the neutrons. These do use the statistics, and that statistics is intimately connected with the knots. And I will probably explain this in a minimal language, and then I will talk immediately about something in relation to DNA and circular DNA and knots. I may or may not have time to talk about cryptography where this is again applied. And lastly, about uh, atoms of space-time, where space itself uh, can be uh, the atoms of that atomic nature of space-time itself can be is related to the knot theory. And I will try, if possible, I will try to go there. Most likely, I will be able to complete the first six parts, which is up to DNA, circular DNA, etc. And the last two, I may not be able to do it. So, within the forty-five minutes, which I can talk. Okay. If there are more interests from colleges, faculty, if anyone is there, if uh, they do provide want me to speak, I can. If time suits, I can come and explain more in colleges like um, uh, Loyola College, Presidency College, Madras Christian College, various colleges, students and faculty who sometimes attend our program. Now, what is a knot? A knot is simply a closed string, okay? So, okay, I will try to, can you see this string which is there? Okay, I'll, I'll try to show you. This is a string of uh, simply shoelace, okay? So if I join these two ends, you get a circular thing, which people call a knot. There is no knot at all here in Tamil Mudichu. So if I put this thing and then join together, then I will get a knotted structure here. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, this is the knotted structure that you have. In fact, what I'm showing you is simply shoelace tied once, okay? And that is what people call as the trefoil knot, and I'll explain how it is coming. It doesn't matter. So this is basically the way in which the knot theory arises, okay? So the example is trefoil. So this is simply take the string here. If you join both the ends like this, okay? If you join both the ends like this, and you will get simply a circle, which is a deformed circle, okay? But if you put once and then join together again, like this, like a modichu, first thing, then you get what is known as a trefoil knot. And there are various other things that will follow from here. So this is trefoil, okay. So there is another thing I can do twice, that kind of a thing, okay? twice, then I will get, there is a not name for that, which is figure of eight, figure eight knot, because it looks like eight. So this is the thing. So the knots are not new in the sense that we have been using it. For example, Buddha and uh, the earlier uh, cultural and religious motivations, they introduced various knots, which I have drawn one of them there, okay? So there is another knot, which is also here written, and there are such sculptures, or there even in Hindu uh, architectural temples, or Buddhist monasteries, Jain monasteries, etc. Islamic, various religious things, they have, they are fascinated by such structures, and it is well known, okay? And uh, in cultural, religious, historical domain, several references to knots, including tying knots. For example, people do hang people, right? Hangman's knot, it's known as them. So there will be a certain number of ways, ways in which that hangman knot is tied up. So you essentially take your shoelace and tie it up. And there is something called in, um, associated with uh, Alexander is a guardian knot, which cannot be unknotted, okay? 
So what did he do? He took a knife and simply cut it off. That's what he solved the problem. How to unknot it is a big question. He simply cut it by knife. So we are not allowed to do that. So there is something called Solomon's knot, which is referred to in um, is, uh, Islamic or medieval uh, mythological stories. And this is that Solomon's knot. Okay. Now, if I want to draw diagrams, I can draw like this. This is simply a string making a circle. Now, you can deform it, but you are not allowed to cut it. The basic thing is you cannot cut it. Okay. So, if you do the 3 1, which is written, the next one is what we called as a trefoil knot. Is take a string, do one. Uh, thing inside and then join the two together, okay, then you get the trefoil knot. The 4-1 is what we call as a figure 8 and 5-1, five 5-2, five there are several things. What are those numbers, 3, 4, 5, etc.? It tells you if I try to project the knot onto a plane, so the string will go one on top of other. How many crossings it makes, okay? At some point, it makes a crossing. You can see it. In 3 1, there are three crossings. In 4 1, there are four crossings. In 5 1, there are five crossings. Okay. Now, such the numbers which is indicating is the number of crossings and the subscript 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. They indicate different types of knots with the same number of crossings. For example, with three crossings, there is only one type of knot, which is trefoil. With four, there is that thing which is there. Okay, 4, 1. 5, 1, 5, 2. There are two types of uh, knots and uh, they are different types, different knots. So there is a classification which has been done in the past and I will tell you what how it happens. So now there are something called mirror knots and I'll tell you what is this. So this letter, this profile looks like the Tamil letter K. Okay, it looks like Tamil letter K. Now there are two diagrams which I have drawn here. You can see they look same, but they are not the same. If you look at very carefully, so there is an overcrossing and undercrossing that is interchange between them. So the left hand side is what is called left handed trefoil, and the right handed, right hand side knot ka is right handed thing. You can easily see if you keep a mirror between one, uh, between the two, it will reflect. But these two are two different knots. Uh, in the sense why it is, why they are called two different knots, we will see how it is happening. Okay, so we also have links. See, I told you a circle will give you one simple circle, one string, one shoelace will give you a knot. But if you have two shoelaces, that red colored one and blue colored one, okay, they are two different things but are interlinked, okay, interlinked. So this is called link. So you are making a distinction between link and a knot. Okay, a knot is made up of only one colored or whatever you want to call rope or string. The other one is having two different. There can be more than two also. You can have any number of them tied together. That is what the uh, different types of knots and links which you have here. Now I'm going to give you how did, why is it people were interested in this knots from the big. Of course, there was applications. People used to go for uh, sailing or people used to climb mountains, etc. In those times, they have to put a knot which will be sturdy. They don't want to fall down from a mountain, right? So they will be using a very sturdy knot structure. So they tie it up, take a string and tie it up. Or if they have a cow or, or a horse to be tied together, they have to make sure that it doesn't run away. It is not able to cut it off. So that kind of knots, people had earlier used it, but the struck the theory of knots, why, what is different, what is the thing, etc., came somewhere during the usefulness of that in not necessarily practical aspects like what I mentioned to you, uh, came in mid-1850s when James Clark Maxwell. Clark Maxwell was there. He was a propounder of the theory of electromagnetism uh, for our light, electromagnetic theory. And he wrote a letter to a professor called Tate. Okay. And uh, 
as you know electromagnetic theory in the way they were projecting they needed the waves were propagating like any wave it needs a medium for example water wave okay you see waves in water needed a medium and that medium was the liquid water itself or you can have sound waves for example you cannot have waves in vacuum right if you if i speak if the room is completely evacuated you won't hear anything because there should be a medium in which the sound travels okay by different pressures etc like that electromagnetic thing was uh, needing a, a medium in those days people were talking about and the name for that it was called ether okay people now know there is no such thing as ether as of now okay so this is a letter written by uh, maxwell to tate professor tate what he said was you can have the not the vortices in the medium like water wave we have sural right like that you can have vortices in ether itself which will be knotted it can be a circle or it can be two such circles interlinked etc now if you create such water wave the thing in medium in the light wave in the ether then it will be very stable when it travels it will not be splitting it up easily okay so the stability of such things will be interesting to study this is what he indicated to professor tate and tate starting from there started to classify all possible knots in fact this is the diagram which i showed you here is uh, the first set of diagrams were written down by tate okay so this is the thing so you can see various ways in which they were discussing the idea of knots in ether okay knots or vortices in ether sural in ether okay this is the kind of idea which started one so that is what they called though each may split into many every one of them must embrace each other etc so there is a knotted one if it is knotted two links are there it can never split they have to travel together that is a kind of idea which was projected then tight gave a lecture on vortices which was proposed by maxwell and these are the things actually he created smoke rings for example now we have seen various experts who smoke cigarettes they take the thing and then blow the smoke and it will go in a circle and there are very good experts who will put one circle and followed by another circle another circle etc and some of them may be even interlinked that kind of structures can be created by artificial means by very nicely by machines and these are the knots which were proposed by tight's vortex machine he called it tight's vortex machine then there was an interesting person the person was kelvin kelvin was a well known physicist 1850s and 60s he came across a very brilliant idea which didn't work out what is that brilliant idea is we know elements chemical elements are there you know hydrogen is there you know helium is there you know argon is there sodium chlorine etc so there are even in those days at least some 80 or 90 elements were known okay these elements played a very crucial role in forming molecules and from where you have the chemistry of all the chemistry started from the underlying things which are there now what kelvin said was a stroke of genius he said atoms are nothing but vortices in ether so he said why is it hydrogen so stable because it is a knot it's a simply a knot but what about helium it is a trifoil knot what about lithium it is one more higher knot so he said that all the atoms or the elements of atoms are made up of vortices in ether so the vortex loops remain so whenever you want to form a sodium chloride you take a knot which is sodium you take a knot which is chlorine and put them as together then it becomes a link sodium chloride molecule is a link of two knots this is the way he was trying to conjecture and maxwell was very impressed uh, because the knots are vibrations this rings 
the loops have vibrations. Those vibration will be the vibrational frequency, the spectrum which people see. You see, this is the idea which uh, Lord Kelvin was trying to propose. And Mac Maxwell was uh, very impressed with this idea. He said, very economical and few assumptions are needed and seem to be a very brilliant idea. This is what he himself said. Unfortunately, this is not true. So Kelvin and Tate created a model for chemical elements through different types of knots in ether. So that's what he drew. He drew all those diagrams like trefoil, figure eight, various types of things which were there. And each knot type will correspond to an element. That is what his idea was. Molecules will be links because two different knots joining to link together will produce a link. Unfortunately, this idea did not work. What idea worked? We all know that Mendeley, around 1870s, he proposed a table, the periodic table, which was given by him based on various chemical and other experiments, chemistry experiments. He proposed those ideas and interest in such a model for chemistry of elements simply went through. It didn't succeed. Now, that is as far as the not circuit. Now, what about, I will explain how these things are linked. What about braids? A braid also play, called plate, okay? Uh, sindhu, in Tamil, they call it sindhu. So, you could mean, people have, women have the long, uh, this thing, they plate it, they split the hair into three parts and then put one on top of another and then go through that. And this is, you need not do it with three, you can do it even with five and this is what is that. So you have the plate, which is made up of five such thing. And this is the kind of diagram which is there. And what is practically happening is you have strands of wire, flexible material wire, such as textile fiber, a thread or a wire or a human hair. Okay, this is what is the thing which is there and you can braid it. Okay, so we will see that this is connected to quantum physics. And that is the beauty of this whole thing. The braiding is linked to something happening in quantum physics. Okay, what is it? So if I want to draw the braid, this is the simple thing I can do. Draw a set of points in two rows. I will draw that. Draw lines connecting the points in the two rows, making sure over crossing and under crossing. So this is basically the diagram. I have drawn four points on the left, four points on the right. The first point is connected to the second point. Second point is connected to the first point. And third and fourth, the third and third are connected. Fourth and fourth are connected in this diagram. So as you can see it here. Now, what about the second diagram that you have? The first point is connected to the first point is connected to the second point. And second point is connected to the first point as it happened in the first diagram itself. Is it different from the first diagram? You can easily see my overcrossing and undercrossing is such that I can make the graph which is there, the line which is coming from one to two, first point in the left-hand side to the second point on the right-hand side, I can simply move it up like the way it has been happening in this thing which is there. So the diagrams are one and the same. These two diagrams are one and the same. It's only I have made a fake extra pulling down, but it doesn't add anything to that, okay? So this is the thing. But on the other hand, this diagram is different from that. So what is the difference? The one is connected to two, two is connected to one. There is no difference. That part is right. But you can see the one is connected to two is going underneath. Whereas two is connected to one is above that in the second diagram. In the first diagram, it is opposite. One is going to two, two is going to one, but which is over crossing and which is under crossing is different. So this braid is different from the other braid, which is there. That is what is the thing. So you got the dis difference in over crossing and under crossing. Now, what is the thing between braids and knots? Now, what you can do is, Okay, so you take this thing, you, I have one is connected to two, 
2 is connected to 1. Join 1 and 1, 2 and 2. So this set of four points, you connect it to the four points on the other side. Okay, just like after all, you take a string, you have a string, you connect it like this. You will get a knot. You will get a circle, you will get a knot, etc. etc. That is what will happen. So later in the century, the mathematics of braid and knot theory was getting understood. If you close the ends of the braids, okay, the two ends of the braids, if you close it, you get knots. That is what is it. So that's why braid com com combinations, these are also producing you different knots. That's where the basic idea is. Two knots are the same. If we can go from one knot to another, see, if without cutting the wire. So for example, if I have, if I have this, uh, if I have this knot, which is there, if I make simply a thing like this, I can unknot it. I don't have to cut the wire. I don't have to cut the wire. I can simply unknot like this. So two knots are equivalent if you can go from one knot to another without cutting the wire. You don't, you are not allowed to cut the wire. This equivalence is stated by the following diagrams. So for example, you take a string, I just fold it like this. That folding which is there in the first diagram can be unfolded. So you will have a straight line. You will have a straight line. So nothing is going to, you don't have to cut it. In order to achieve that, you don't have to cut it. Or for example, second diagram, there are two lines. Now you take the second one is going over the first one in both the places. So you can simply move it out. If you have two such things, you can move it out. Okay, that is the second thing. And similarly for the third one also. These are all essentially diagrammatically telling you, you are allowed to do such steps. You are allowed to do practice such steps. By this, if you can go from one knot to another knot, these two knots are equal. That's a practical definition. So I'm going to uh, demonstrate. I don't know whether it will be visible. Let me try to do it here. You may look, something is very complicated. It may not be complicated. So I have a string here and this is my unknot. I simply joined together, okay? I simply joined together. So I put this and then put a knot, which is called the trefoil knot. This is what we called as a trefoil knot, okay? Now, what I can do is, I can do one more like this, one more profile knot here, okay? One more profile knot here. So this is what you have here. Now, I can do one more. I go through this here, okay? Then it is becoming more and more complicated. I also put it through here, okay? Now, you think that is a very complicated knot I have done, but if I move this, you will find that it actually splits into straight away into come out. Let me try again. It should come out. I have done that. Yes. Yes, it happens. So let me try to do that. I have this. It may not be more complicated. So it is not really a knot by doing more and more, it may not be uh, creating more complicated knot, it may be simply a knot. So the whole idea, I didn't do anything, I didn't cut it, I didn't cut it at all. So if I can go from one to another without cutting, then they are all equal. Okay, so we can put some invariants associated with that. For example, there is a link here, you can associate plus one and minus one for every overcrossing and minus undercross. If it is over, plus one. If it is under, minus one. So if you do that, you can ask what is called linking invariant. Now, if you do this kind of a thing, if you make a fake twist, etc., it will not increasing, increase the linking invariant. It will remain the same. In these diagrams, the linking invariants or zero or one or something like that, which will automatically come here. This is what you have here. For more than two wires, we have to generalize the linking number, okay? Now, this is what, see, I have here two, a link of two knots, 
which is drawn in the first set of diagrams. And the second set of diagrams, you have three knots, three, three ropes, blue colored one, yellow, uh, red colored one, and uh, yellow colored one. There are three of them. Now you can easily see this very interesting thing. There is a name for this thing. The name for that is called Boromian ring. It is called Boromian rings. There are three of them connected. Now, the interesting thing is if I cut red, if I cut the red, the blue and yellow will separate. Blue and yellow will separate. If I cut the yellow, the green and red will separate. And if I cut the blue, the yellow and red will separate. But together, all of them together, they will not separate. You cannot do without cutting, you cannot separate them as three different things. But if you cut one of them, the other two will also separate. That's the beauty of this Boromian rings. And uh, I have a small advertisement for this. Our institute has a logo, and this is that. You can see that logo is made up of Boromian rings. There are three colored, uh, we have drawn it in the form of a rectangle, but there are three of them, red, green, and gray colored, red, green, and gray colored. And uh, they are like, we used to call them as mathematics, physics, and computer science, which were there at that time. They are three different subjects, but we are all together. We were together. And if you remove maths, physics and computer science will separate. Computer science, if you cut it, the other two will separate. This is basically the thing, idea, which thing and this kind of a logo was created by us. Now, a lot of mathematics, physics, and computer science, now computation on biology, et cetera, was getting done in this place. So this is a small advertisement for the Institute, which helped us to organize this meeting. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about what is the use of such knots and braids, braids and knots. Braids, if you connect to the two ends, you get knots, that's all, okay? Now in quantum theory, we have a rule for identical and indistinguishable particles. What is meant by this? We, in, in conventional um, uh, thermodynamics, kinetic theory of gases, what we have is molecules, which are identical molecules, not interacting at all, not interacting at all, then, Thing. That is the way school level physics and college level physics are taught. Now they have, they are identical particles. A particle first one, a hydrogen here and another hydrogen at another point, you can't distinguish between the second particle is in the first place and the first particle in the second place. You cannot distinguish that. They are called identical and indistinguishable particles. So now what they do is in quantum theory, there is a rule for them in the sense of they are all identical and indistinguishable particles. In quantum theory, we describe everything by what are known as exclusion principle, which is required for our stability of atoms. Okay, stability of atoms, which is called Pauli's exclusion principle. The Fermi Dirac statistics was proposed for that purpose. That means two electrons cannot be in the same state. They said it cannot be in the same state. No two electrons can occupy this. Without that, you don't have an atom. An atom requires a nucleus outside an electron. That is what is hydrogen, a proton, and going around is electron. Or you can have a proton and a neutron, and two electrons can be there. But if I want to put one more electron, I have to go to the higher level, excited level. This is what is the thing about Fermi Dirac statistics. Now, these things were used by some of the well known physicists of the some 100 years back. Sa Magnats, uh, the Bose, S. Satyendranath Bose, Magnat Saha, C. V. Raman, and Chandrasekhar, and many other physicists were there at that time, used these ideas of uh, electrons and photons, light. Okay, They obeyed two different statistics. One is called Bose-Einstein statistics. Another is called Fermi-Dirac statistics. How, what is this related? Bose-Einstein statistics is responsible for Planck distribution. Black body radiation in the colleges and schools, we teach that if you keep radiation inside a black body, they get distributed in some way. Okay, a particle has to obey either Bose-Einstein statistics or Fermi-Dirac statistics. It has to be a spin-half particle like uh, electron, 
or spin one particle like photon so they will be not none of the other thing either half integral or integral particles and they will be obeying bose einstein or fermi dirac statistics okay so mathematically this is a minimum mathematics i am going to use they are described by wave functions a wave function is a complex number now uh, here the psi which i have written down describes a particle in position x1 another particle in position x2 if i exchange them if i take x the particle in two position to one and one position to two the right hand side psi of x2 x1 will come but it may not be the same it may not be identical it may be either plus sign or minus sign if it is plus sign you say that the particles are bosonic bose particles if it is minus sign you say the particles are fermi dirac statistics that's what is there. that is if you exchange two identical and indistinguishable particles the wave function will be plus or minus or the same depending on bosons and fermions this is known as spin statistics theorem in this thing okay now how is this related now recall braid is an exchange of two wires so you can think of the two particles you exchange the two particles as two lines which are drawing and you exchange it okay so the wires which are there are the dynamical motion of the particle itself the two paths the two paths which you are creating making to exchange them the paths of two identical particles if we do this twice if i exchange twice we will get back the same thing one will come back to one two will be there so it has to be identical to what you started with so if you exchange what you expect is psi x1 x2 should be e to the power i theta it can be only complex number the only change that can be there is a phase factor and the phase factor is either 0 or pi because e power i 0 is 1 e power i pi is minus 1 as bosons and fermions so the braids and statistics get entirely interlinked like this this is possible in three dimensions so where we live our particles live in three dimensions hence we have only bosons or fermions in three dimensions can be explained from this simple principle we don't have any other type of particles bosons and fermions we don't have anything different with the value of theta which is different okay this is what is the thing chandrasekhar limit for example if you take a star like sun uh, what will happen to sun after some million million years afterwards it will exhaust all the nuclear energy which was providing us so much light okay which was providing us light so that chandrasekhar limit said that when it when all the nuclear energies are lost nuclear forces are no longer able to can keep the star together it will start collapsing because gravity will pull all the particles hydrogen helium etc which is there it will be pulled to the center and that will collapse will essentially result in some kind of a supernova and the core will remain as white dwarf so the star will have become a white dwarf star there are already there are several white dwarf stars are there thousands of white dwarf stars are identified they will have a mass which ca cannot exceed 1.4 times the solar mass that is the maximum it can have and that is the limit which was obtained by chandrasekhar in 1930s late 30s and for which he got his nobel prize the mass of the white dwarf thing and why is it happening it is happening because the electron which is the for electron gas which is inside they are offering a pressure to split go away and that is what is giving you the thing gravity is pulling it there is a balance between them and the balance is such that it cannot have a mass more than that much similarly to neutron star also and it is a little more complicated but similar behavior is neutron star in two dimensions supposing you live in two dimensions or you force the electrons to stay in three two dimensions to remain in a plane then the above statement that can be only electrons or boson uh, bosons or fermions is no longer true because if you make a hole because there is a possibility that it can be theta can be anything and they are called anions which is resulting from what uh, the last 20 or 30 years of study in what is known as quantum hall effect so this is a very interesting thing 
so the statistics and braiding are related to each other and they provide an understanding of what is happening in nature this is the first lesson which we learn from here so this is an interesting quote from maxwell which i have written down i'm going to skip it because it's about the knottedness etc if anyone is interested they can download this okay next is about dna okay the dna is a genetic material of all cells containing coded information all our thing what we do what we help is contained in dna and we communicate the dna to the next generation okay and there are mutations taking place and the new new generation acquire new things also that is there the past is for example the genetic information that people of similar color which is there in india the next generation also have that thing but that is not the case in western countries etc or african country so there is some genetic information which is carried on by various uh, all the human thing and also even all species okay so the G dna is a genetic material of all cells containing coded information it consists of two polynucleotide strands two strands i could have drawn the diagram you now i'll show some diagram twisted around each other in a double helix that's a major work which was done in 1950s okay it actually followed the work done by somebody some professor from chennai uh, g n ramachandran who did a work on triple helix for uh, materials which are colloidal materials okay uh, collagens so first what we do is we replicate dna because genetic thing is conveyed by replication and copies are distributed to daughter cells the next generation gets those things etc by copying it by making what is called the xerox copy T dna transcribe proteins that direct the cell growth but it is tightly packed so if if you want to replicate you have to unpack it when you unpack it into genes uh, the genes and chromosomes that we have to do that unpacking itself with enzyme enzymes okay this is the procedure which is there for dnas very complex bio bio uh, biological processes do take place here but what can be understand from not theory can not theory help us understand dna packing or at what rates enzymes are not dna because unpacking is required it is a topological question at the end of that part of the work is topological question along with physics chemistry and biological inputs so mathematical knots are represented in two dimension as a shadow of a three dimensional knot okay this is the kind of diagram which you have some knot which you have here each crossing point is plus or minus sign depending on orientation now the only way to unite the mathematical knot uh, untie a mathematical knot unpack it as you say for example if you have a dna which is completely thin you have to cut through the knot you have to cut it you have to cut it and then take the over crossing to under crossing and join them together this is equivalent to changing the sign at the crossing point the number of times one must cut a knot in order to unknot is called the unknotting number okay so this is a simple diagram which i have explained there is a red colored uh, circle which is there you can see it hopefully and you can see there is some over crossing and under crossing if you want to change it so that is a trefoil knot if you want to make it as an knot you have to make the over crossing and under crossing interchange you have to cut it and put it behind if you do that it will become an knot so the unpacking is equivalent to doing this in a simplest language okay so this is the kind of topological methods explain properties of dna replication transcription and recombination when you try to use these ideas so enzymes called topoisomers unpacks the dna dna also has a number of twists in it okay dna has a lot of twists which are like a telephone coil if you have a telephone coil you will find a lot of twists are there and uh, topological methods were used to determine how topoisomers gyrase works in what is called e coli to supercoil dna so this is the kind of a thing which is used in understanding how the plus is changed to minus on the red circle so that it becomes simply a non knot okay simply become a knot 
the writh the super coiling is also related to what is known as the writhing because it is writh is decreased as gyre is acted and a step wise decrease in writh would occur as a sign of crossing point changes they concluded that the topo isomerases act by slicing the crossing point and reconnecting on the reverse side this is what i mentioned by the diagram here but this is a biological and chemical process there are some energies involved in this and those details but what is required is it is enough to study what happens in that neighborhood you don't have to study the whole thing that's what makes this interesting so we can also discover the stepwise decrease in crossing number consisted of two types that's what two steps so this indicated that gyrase was a type 2 topo isomer which is a technical term that acted by nicking which is essentially cutting and reconnecting both strands of the double helix type 1 unpacks the dna by cutting a single strand rotating the free ends and reconnecting the ends by decreasing in single strand that also is another way okay computing the unknotting number for twisted dna estimates the number of times topo isomers acts to unpack the dna and that how many times it is going to act will determine the rate at which it is going to take place because each action takes some time so if you take some million times it has to do or billion times the order of second time scales will be entirely different and that is what is indicated by this thing so i think i should not go further into these things so i will try to conclude we have seen simple statistics and dna and there are other things like cryptography where people communicate there also these are all used but powerful role of topology and geometry of knots in physics and biology okay these are only couple of examples i have taken only two examples for such beautiful applications understanding requires only intuitive ideas of shape of things which we see in our day to day life yet they have very profound implications and uh, my hope my uh, the thing is the several people like alexander artin these are all mathematics people jones and yet witten which was the name they is actually a physicist okay who in 1985 he made a fantastic theory of connecting the physics with the not theory which was developed by jones and before that by artin and alexander etc will need more background if i want to explain it more i should tell you something more about complex analysis i should tell you more about group theory i should tell you more about various things which i do not have time nor think it is a regular coursework which is there but it needs more background in several areas to understand by what is the purpose of my talk is essentially to provide motivations towards that if people who are in physics or mathematics can understand by understanding the background which is required and i have prepared everything using beamer publicly available software and many pictures used here were from the internet okay so this is the final remark which i wanted to make and uh, i will stop now okay i have taken sufficient time right is it okay so about 50 minutes i took so i have given a basic idea of knot theory and braid theory which uh, provides a lot of applications in physics biology and computer science and various other places and they are all coming from something which we know already the something which we know is we we tie our shoe lace every day okay we tie a knot uh, by even tie okay if in fact there is a paper in nature there are some 14 ways in which tie can be tied there are only 14 ways because they want to minimize the number so these are the things which are there and uh, it has application in understanding statistics of particles it has application in understanding the coiling of dna protein etc it has some understanding and various uh, other issues and there are issues in gravity quantum gravity which is there which require a good understanding of knot theory which will be useful in several other places so i hope my talk provided a interest to be developed to understand the basic simple question of theory of knots i'll stop here thank you
it's a time for question and answer. Uh, any of you have any questions, uh, you can directly connect and ask. Otherwise, you can write your question in the chat box or the so that we can start answering the questions. You can unmute your mic and you can ask the question. Is there anything in this chat? Chat. So let me start with one question. Uh, so you are. I, let me pick up from the last sentence. Uh, many pictures were used here from the internet. Mm. Internet is also a, mm. uh, a web of uh, sure. data packets. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Things, no? sure, sure. Is there any connection with it? Uh, well, that becomes more. There are more complex. More complex. These are all infinite crossing knots. A <laughs> large number of crossings. Mm. The knots can be three crossing, four crossing. There are only finite small number of crossings. Okay, there are, when you go to 10 crossings, the number of different types of knots will go to million. When you go to 20 crossings, the number of uh, types of knots will go to billion. Correct. So the number will enormously increase. Okay, so like that, the networking of various uh, places Correct. by this thing will become enormous amount of possibilities which are there and it is also used there. Maybe a, a, a billion nodes are there in a network. A billion, billion. <laughs> yeah, there are plenty of them. So that is the way it is. Uh, Saprajit, yeah, raised right. hand. So there is a question. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. It was a good yes. talk. I wanted to ask uh, something about uh, the way in which we categorize nodes. Okay. Which is we uh, talk about how many crossings it has, and mm. then the subscript tells how many types we have. Okay. With the same number of crossings. Okay. And so, just as Sir was mentioning, when we talk about large number of knots, then the number of possibilities that we can have will be high. Is there any link between mm. the number of crossing versus and the number of types that we can have? Like for a three okay. crossing, we have one knot. And okay. So on. Okay. So uh, the basic idea is, uh, this is what is known as a classification problem of knots. How many different types of knots are there? There are infinite number of them, depending on the number of crossings. As you increase the crossings, the number of types of knots will also increase. But simply by increasing the crossing, you may not have uh, a different knot. It may be even simple knot as I have shown by explicitly doing some uh, using my string. So the question is, if I give an arbitrary knot, is it equivalent to another knot? That's a question which you can ask. And that is the three steps which I mentioned, which were written as read master's move. Let me try to, so you draw your knot. Let me try to go back to that diagram. Ah, here. So you draw an arbitrary knot, two knots, and you are allowed to one, do only these three moves, three these three changes. If I do that, if I can go from one to another, then these two knots are equal. That's what is the thing. So your complicated knot may be as look may, which looks like complicated may not be that complicated. That's a basic idea. So. The classification of knots is an open problem which people have not succeeded. And it is related to uh, several topological questions. It is an open question which people have not solved it. But it is true that number of, uh, we know all possible knots up to something like 12 or 13 crossings because people have written down explicitly by drawing diagrams and proving any other diagram which you draw with those, that many crossings uh, will be within be equivalent the same, to one of them. is equivalent to one of them. So that okay. much classification has been done up to some 12 or 13 crossings. And whenever people want, people would like to find out, can I associate a number, some kind of a polynomial to each of them to so right. that we know that if the two polynomials are different for each one of them, two different knots, then it must be two different uh, knots. Okay. Right. 
So this is a kind of question which people call, which is the mathematical structures which people look for. And uh, it may happen that uh, you are, there could be a situation where uh, something is uh, uh, looks different, may not be different. And something will have uh, two knots, two of them may have the same polynomial, but they may be different uh, uh, types also. So this is the kind of thing. If they have two different polynomials, then you can be sure that they are different knots. That is the right. interesting part about it. Now, they may have same polynomial, but still they may be different. That can also happen. So these are all to do with the mathematical way in which these things are implemented. And that's what some of the work which I myself have done, creating a, some kind of an invariant polynomial, which will describe the knots. Thank you. Okay. Another question. Please do explain about how the knot theory can be used in string theory. Oh. Well, the strings, uh, string theory actually is uh, something talking about the space time and 10 dimensions. And uh, what people do is they have to compactify or go down to four dimensions because we live in X, Y, Z, and T. Okay? So they make a six dimensional space, time, space, which is a compact space, etc. And uh, this six dimensional space studying that uh, has a lot of uh, inputs as three complex. Each complex dimension will be two, that's six, three complex dimensions. We can create knots in the three complex dimensions and study the different types of uh, uh, six dimensional spaces, which will be useful in constructing the six dimensional compactified spaces which is used in strict theory. So this is, uh, I can do more justice to this question, but at the moment it will go far beyond uh, what is required for a general audience. One audience is asking your hmm. contact details. He is doing research on uh, not theory. Okay, good. So you can, uh, uh, my contact details are trg at imsc.research.in. Probably he will put it in the, uh, this thing. Chat. Yeah. What's it? Who is that person? Is His name is Infan Gabriel. Gabriel. Where is he? Can you, yeah, uh, Gabriel, can you unmute your mic and uh, um, introduce yourself? Okay. Okay. Is there any other question? What does this pen miss? It's there, but his, his mic is not showing. Okay. At least audio is loud. I think he has to log out and come back to get it, get, get his work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the only thing we can communicate for him. Now yeah, yeah, by the Okay. Is there any other question? I don't see any questions for that. You have any question? Yes. Yes. So this is the writhing and the tangling, which happens. So they are related. Like cable, uh, telephone cable, which is there, it will be connected by uh, entanglement, etc. And also uh, cabling, which is there. So you try to pull it, it will become a straight line, but also it will unwind itself. So those two parameters are related to each other in mathematics. So it is also one of the things which will come from Maxwell's theory of electromagnetic <laughs> Is one of the thing results given by Maxwell himself. <laughs> Very into the relation between writhing and how many times it will cable is also related to that. It's also what people do in geometry related to torsion and other things which are there. Okay, so that is the thing. But it will simple mathematics, simple behavior which is there, we can easily estimate. 
there is an invariant which you can construct from there. Okay. Any questions? Hmm. Okay. So shall we wind up? Yeah, that's good. Uh, Shalla Kumar, are you there? Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Uh, any question or if you, you can tell me wind up or can you provide the water tanks? Okay. Fine. Sir, Murshid Lama, sir? Ah, Murshid Lama. Ah, sir. Sir, welcome. Welcome, Ali. Welcome, welcome, Nandu. Uh, now, that was Tamil in Mudichi and Mudichi and Bade Kuritu. Arpadamana Murile, Perasri ever held. It's very, very Achinakal. Kairodu and the Namai Anivarium, Yuriki Kati, Vodi, Nigel Shodi, Yuriki Kati, Anitu Target. Mule. Arpadamana, we come Vilakamana. Elmiana or a pitchy. I was under the ball be rain, num, uh, Mudi Talay Lirunde, Carl Murray, Mudichikil, uh, Namai Suchi, a polling will do one day Krade, a Pande, a column Buddha, in the Navina Karam Bari, Mudi Arivial, Vadiel, Matum, um, Yerbiel, Matum, Viria, but a Yella, the Arivial in Yella, Turikalil, Mudichi, and Buddha, Namaria Malay. Nigandu Nam Nigandu on the Gundar Kade, a Yeralaman, I Hulum, up for the Kala Uber Kala Katarin, not the Gundar Kur. In the in the I Hugel, in the Dictation, I could tell the Manam Rile, Perasri, TR, Govind Rajan Abrakil, I am a studio villain, Namakahe, Oriachi Muditur Krakil, Abrakil Kunanji, in the Nigashi, Wurungineta, I am a see Nirvakam, Machum, uh, Vijian, Thir Adodas in the PSL. Team, Atuni Birkum, Nandi Ether with the Kulgare. Mindum in the Nigger Shield, Adatha Adatha Mother, Vide, Bunda, Uri Nigger Shi, Nadipurum, in the Nigger Shield, Mindum, Nam, Anipurum Sandikala, Nandri Banaka.